Welcome back. We start with World Design Medal Laureate Special Address. Please welcome back to the stage WDO President David Kusuma. So thank you again, Ms. Umeda. Hello again to all of our participants today. Uh, I, I sincerely hope uh, all of you have been uh, enjoying the conference so far. Uh, I am honored right now uh, to share a few words about WDO's World Design Medal in celebration of our 2022 laureate, Dr. Patricia Moore. So, so first I want to begin with a little bit of uh, history. Uh, the World Design Medal, uh, it was established actually in 2017. Uh, and this was on the occasion of WDO's 60th anniversary. So the goal then, and actually as it remains today, uh, is to recognize an, in, an individual who has made the most significant contributions to the advancement of the industrial design profession. And in many ways, this special merit highlights WDO's larger mission to raise awareness of how design, and designers for that matter, can positively impact our world. For the World Design Organization, the World Design Medal has become an opportunity to shine a spotlight on the diverse achievements of designers from across our global community. We follow a community-driven nomination process, normally beginning with a call to WDO members to nominate designers of outstanding merit from each of their regions. Nominees are then reviewed and shortlisted by the standing board of directors before a final selection is made by the WDO Senate. This is a group that represents the past presidents of our organization from the last three decades. So it's a huge undertaking, and really this is a very and extremely rare award. In 2017, during the 30th World Design Assembly in Torino, this is the inaugural World Design Medal, was presented to Mr. Hartmut Esslinger, the world-renowned industrial designer and the founder of Frog Design. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge that Hartmut has made the journey to join us here in Tokyo, especially for this special occasion. This is only the second time the World Design Medal has been awarded. And in 2022, we once again had a dedicated public call and nominations for the World Design Medal. We received a huge list of nominees, outstanding and well-deserved candidates. The list was extremely long. And uh, at the end, among those names submitted was the one you're now all familiar with, Dr. Patricia Moore. So to further share the many qualities and the outstanding achievements that made Patricia Moore the recipient of the World Design Medal, I'd like to welcome to the stage the 2017 World Design Medal recipient, Mr. Hartmut Esslinger, to share a few words, and then afterwards, Hartmut will introduce Dr. Patricia Moore, who will then address the Congress. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, uh, no, the, the light doesn't work here. <laughs> That's true. Anyway, how are you? Thank you for having me. Uh, this will be short. Uh, dear Patty, 
And I call you Patty, you know, because my wife's name is Patricia, so we have no confusion that Patty is anyway your official name. So uh, first I want to congratulate you for the unique honor of being recipient of the World Design Medal. And uh, it's really a very, very special thing, I can tell you. Uh, you, you disguised as a heroic American industrial designer. And when we finally met in person, you were true to your image as a polite and soft-spoken rebel. Not always, <laughs> but it stays between us. And as designers typically try to negate aging, illness, and disabilities, everybody must be young, dynamic, wealthy, and happy. And this results in often insulting or even crippling product experiences. On the other side, institutionally organized universal design or regulated universal design often has the appeal of disability like living in an assisted uh, living home. Your work and your continued public engagement is proof that ease of safe use is universal for humans of all ages. A side of perfect function that ease of safe use is universal for humans of all ages. And a side of perfect function, we also need positive emotions, such as our Tridus inspired OXO kitchen tools, who, which became a lifestyle, lifestyle icon. Now speaking of heroes, okay, I'm educated in Europe, so we considered ancient Greece as a source of our narrow or near culture, as you call it. And actually, I learned Greek, the old Greek, doesn't help today. And uh, but a lot of our language in the, in the West comes from the Greek culture. So as we are older and cannot go back, I think the inspiration of the Greek myths are a great source of inspiration. The, the gods and goddesses, they had many gods and go other goddesses equally shared. And they had their tasks. It was not one who to take care of everything. They had no time for nothing. And uh, I especially liked, when I was 12 years old, the science fiction saga about Jason and the Argonauts. The ship, Argo, was designed by Athena, a deity known for strategy, wisdom, and craft, basically the godmother of design. And she gave the builders a piece of holy oak for the bow. And this wood could correctly and consciously speak in human voices, navigate the ship, and warn of dangers. Today, not so science fiction anymore. This brings us to another goddess, which became more relevant for, to me over time, Hebe, meaning blue of youth, the goddess of eternal youth. You could stop, she could stop aging, and also even restore youth to mortals she preferred to live forever. Science fiction? Maybe, maybe not. As our young generations, looking ahead, are facing unseen challenges of social injustice, economic fears, drugs and crime, overpopulation, climate disasters, and to make things worse, hate and lies on social media, brutal political terror and wars of aggression. The result is a huge chasm between them and us as a professional elite in charge of designing a better future for them. A modern day Hebe may be near as we have created technologies such as artificial intelligence, bionics, and medical breakthroughs. I envision that we soon can invert your age travel experiment backward and simulate life as teenagers. And not just the wealthy one who are consumer marketing bullshit, but real teenagers worldwide, and most of them are poor, not bad educated, you know, access. And that we also discover their dreams and ideals. And not just deal with, with their fears and frustrations, but bring them into the positive energy. And to show, and our most important, we have to teach them, based on science and based on human humanity principles, how to design a more livable and ecological world, 
hopefully also more just and more peaceful. So Paddy's way, this time maybe again disguised or maybe not. Thank you. Thank you, darling. <laughs> the year, 1953. The child, me. <laughs> My disdain for design that discriminates came at an early age. My father called this my worm face. It meant that I was displeased. Gentlemen, especially, if you see this face, run. <laughs> my career has been defined by attempts to focus on those who sadly architecture and design seem to deliberately forget. In the ancient capital of Nara, decades ago, I witnessed this elegant ballet, this beautiful independent woman insisting on walking these dangerous steps not with a cane, but an umbrella, a disguise. She was telling us in this beautiful moment, you have not designed for me a product that speaks to my heart and soul. And so I will use my umbrella to steady me, to guide me, to lead me. Nineteen sixty three is a year of pain, I think, for anyone on the planet who was alive and aware. It was the year, it was the day of my parents' wedding anniversary. After the assassination of President Kennedy, my parents never again celebrated their anniversary. The memory was too painful. But for me, the memory is, as a very young child, it was the first time I saw adults cry. Wherever I looked, adults were weeping, openly sobbing wiping tears from their face. It was terrifying for a child. In 1968, as a brave teenage girl, I told my parents I was going to Washington, D.C. I wanted to see Martin Luther King speak and my father said, no, I could not take a bus for 12 hours by myself to see this great man, this great humanitarian, this leader among leaders fighting racial hate. And I was devastated. Two years later, I was devastated again when I realized that things could go wrong, very wrong, not just with people, but with things. It's my first recognition about the failure of design. It had a happy ending. We were lucky. And so, 
At 17, I found myself at the Rochester Institute of Technology. Not to be a designer, by the way. I went to be a medical illustrator because I wanted to be a fine artist. And I had a plan, which was learn a trade, pay the bills, I'm very pragmatic, and then be a famous artist. It was a wonderful idea. But a professor saw me in a studio one day and said, I think you would be good at this, and gave me a stack of journals for the Industrial Designers Society. And I was hooked. And my art changed. And my life changed. Because I discovered that in this world, sadly, not all people are equal. And I was told because of my gender, I didn't belong in the field of industrial design. Remarkable. I learned that under the Constitution of the United States, I was not equal to a man. Fascinating. <laughs> and in 1974, three men came to RIT. I was called to the dean's office, something that I admit was not unusual. And the men in suits made me an offer I couldn't refuse. I was invited to come to New York and be the only female at Raymond Lowy's office. And the dream began. This boy and his toys, this wonderful man who loved the work he did for NASA and the space program, and a man who sat on the floor of the Oval Office of the President of the United States like two little boys, John F. Kennedy and Raymond Lowy, cutting up colored paper and pasting shapes and designing the iconic Air Force One that travels the globe and alerts everyone. Yes, not with vanity, but the Americans are here. In this time of war, my heart breaks, but the Americans are here. And hopefully we represent a chance for peace because I simply don't understand how war and hate can ever make the vanquished happy and proud. So let's pray for peace. Let's design for peace. Let's work together as the family we're meant to be for peace. At Lowy's office, I discovered something else that came as a tremendous disappointment and surprise by design, and that was that consumers were being divided into normal and abnormal. Those people, those were the people I chose to serve. People who saw with their fingertips. People who heard with their hands. And people with hands that no longer worked as they needed. And people caring for people with greater need. I spoke of empathy and my fellow designers and architects and engineers at Lowy's office said, what the hell are you talking about? That is social science. That is medicine. That is not design. I thought they were wrong. And so at 26, I became 85. And I traveled the US and Canada for four years 
disguised as an elder who very much represents my beloved grandmother. And I learned how it felt to be dismissed and denied by design. And I experienced love and friendship and appreciation and caring. Little children called me grandma because anyone with snow on their rooftop was just that, a grand mama. And then one day, a group of boys, they couldn't been much more than 12 years of age, chose to attack and beat me and leave me bloody on the street. And it wasn't until years later we discovered that in that moment of hate, they robbed me of the right to bear a child. I changed none of it. I learned so much. And I'm so proud to have shared it with you all of these years. We have emerged as designers with an agenda for universality and equality. All over this planet, we strive to focus now on lifespan needs from our first moment to our last. We create a lifestyle that celebrates each individual for their uniqueness. And whether you live in a grand house or a humble home, that you are recognized by design and provided quality for all of your days. The most difficult work I do is with those wounded, devastated by hate and war. And I couldn't be prouder as a designer to stand by the side of a child such as this and assure them that together we will create compensations and a new life, a different life, but a life of quality by design. That there are no handicapped people. There are only people that have unique capacity who among us would say to this child, oh, poor thing, what's wrong with you? When everything is right because of design. So let's further strive to reduce the separation and the bias and the prejudice of the isms, chief among them, anything related to a person's ability and capacity for quality of life. Let's keep pushing that envelope, dreaming big, providing beyond mere accessibility, looking at a holistic view of everyday life for everyday people, and creating the usability we all desire and deserve. And thank you, Sam and Betsy Farber, for the great opportunity to with you and Smart Design create OXO, which changed attitudes forever about a good grip. Knowing that even our utensils could be sexy and sell big. We have challenges, ladies and gentlemen, of course. I am a Pollyanna, but I'm not naive. We live in a world of silos and separation, and this must end. We live in a world of disaster. We live in a world of polarity and hate. We live in a world where the innocents are harmed, where little children at their schoolwork run for their lives because of automatic weaponry and a refrigerator cord fails and takes the lives of innocent people in their homes, further implicated by poor choice of building material. And we live in a world 
that's suffering from drought and fire and not just humans. So designers, we have responsibilities to remember all people as equal, to create solutions that make sense in the moment and forever. Could we be more ashamed today as designers to look around the world and see some of our citizens sleeping on the streets? Here in San Francisco, here in Tokyo, the lack of design the presence of design, coming up with affordable homes, printed homes, and yes, our next planet's homes. We have expectations to serve all the children with equity, with every generation holding hands with dignity no matter what the culture or what the country, with security for all people, all colors, all shapes, all sizes, all ages, all abilities, by design. Don't forget the hugs. Fight beyond survival. Remember Pres Professor Hawking's final interview when asked, what do we need to survive? He said one word, empathy. Give a damn, give design. Don't build walls, build bridges. Hold hands, stick together by design. From my heart to yours, Thank you so very much. Patty, that was incredible. Thank you so much for sharing your story. You filled all of us with a lot of emotion. And it's very easy to see why you are such a hero to so many people. Thank you. You have always been inspirational. You've inspired an entire generation of designers, not only through your incredible work and your reputation, but also because of your incredible warmth and your humanity. So for those of you who have not yet met Patty, I would encourage you to please take this rare opportunity so that you can meet her, and for sure, you will also be inspired by her. On behalf of the World Design Organization, I am honored to officially present the 2022 World Design Medal to Dr. Patricia Moore.
Please give a warm round of applause once again for Dr. Moore.